look how pretty that is. Woo, it's like Christmas in here. Wow. This is a long road trip and I encourage you to stick with me because it's fun. But for the time poor, here's the summary. This Kona EV is a really, really good fully electric small SUV. I would love to own it, except that I don't much like the exterior styling. It needs grippier tyres for the pretty amazing torque it produces, and it's not that big. I don't think I can squeeze my base rig and the whole band's PA in it. But from behind the driver's seat, comfort, practicality, features, feel-good factor, cost to run, it's fantastic, and I loved it. That said, why don't you just stick with me for the journey and we'll learn about it together. Good morning everybody. Welcome to the Kona EV Electric. And today, something different, road trip. We've got a full battery. We left home with the trip meter on zero. We've got 482 kilometers claimed range. First thing I like about this car, you can charge it to 100%. I said charge it right up, mate. Run it right down if you need to. Adaptive cruise control running at the moment, just maintaining a nice gap at 78 k's now behind this Land Cruiser. First two minutes done, seven hours to go. Whoa, and out we come, and it's a beautiful sunny day. Little North Connect tunnel we just did, took about five minutes, cost eight dollars, saved about 20 sets of traffic lights. Look, hey, American friends, this is a clover leaf, such as you pioneered in the 1960s, and we've got one, but we're just heading straight through it. We do have Android Auto connected, can't touch your phone. Also supports Apple CarPlay. One of the first reasons we're doing this is that I want to find out how practical and efficient it is to use an EV for a road trip. Around town, I think we've all probably accepted by now, most of us anyway, that EVs are good for scooting around, doing the shopping, going short distances to work. But today and one day we're going to do 700 k's. And that's going to mean recharging a couple of times. I'm going to use the aircon, I'm going to use all the features, I'm going to leave everything running. It's not an economy run, but right now, since we left home, we've done 55 k's already, and we're using 12.1 kilowatt hours per 100 k, which is exceptionally good. Last week we reviewed the BMW iX3 and we got, with some spirited driving, 21.4 average. But I have to tell you, this car is half the price of that car. This is a $60,000 on the road, and I'm incredibly impressed with it so far. Okay, we're out of town now. 110, cruise control back on. Now this is the most traveled route in Australia, Sydney, Melbourne on the Hume Highway. But you'd expect this to be fairly well serviced with charged locations, and I'm sure it will be. Okay, so here's the short version of the trip. We're going to Goulburn. 200k down the freeway. We're then doing another 55k to Gunning, where I'm going to do a bit of a work job. Turn around, go back to Goulburn, charge up, and then the exciting bit. We're going to go from Goulburn over the mountain range to Lithgow. Now this is a road I've never driven, I don't think, and it goes right over a high range, lots of twisty windy stuff through national parks, but there are absolutely no charge stations to be found on Plugshare, so we're going to put our faith in the car, maybe three hours of driving, with not a charge station in sight. That'll be exciting. It's a great big loop. I want to get back by sunset if I can. Part of the reason we're doing this is during the weeks, a young shock jock on the radio put up a post describing how impractical it was to have an electric car, how it was based on wishful thinking, the whole charging thing, because they did a drive half what I'm doing today, and on it he said we had to stop everywhere, every 80 k's, every 100 k's, to fill up again, to charge up, and then it was a half hour wait. Why, if you've got a car with a range of 400 or 500 kilometers, do you stop at every servo? Do you do that in a petrol car? Do you drive along and go, oh, there's a servo, how much have I got? Three quarters of a tank, oh, I better put another 10 bucks in. No. So why did they do that in an electric car? Yes, I understand the, the infrastructure's not there yet. That's what we're testing today. Now, one person's experience does not make a case study. This is not an empirical, therefore I've proven it, just as Ben Fordham's story does not prove his case. And we'll see how it goes. At the same time, we'll be testing out the Kona. What better way to get to know an electric vehicle than to take a long road trip in it? And I can tell you first impressions, I only picked the car up yesterday, 
very good, particularly from inside. Styling-wise, I've got to tell you, the outside leaves me a little bit cold. I'm not really thrilled, but inside, it's got everything I need and nothing I don't. It's got my favourite heated and cooled seats, three levels of cooling, three levels of heating. This is Australia, it's hot. Cool seats, very nice option to have. Head-up display, brilliant. Honestly, it's got everything. So, on Android Auto, I've got a bunch of applications. We've got the Plug Share app, which is the one you use to find charges. It already knows what kind of car I'm driving and also tell people when you are using them when you might be back. That's just a courtesy thing. Navigate to Goldman Charge Fox. There it is, perfect. Stay on this highway for 58 kilometres. Too easy. Let's see how my first experience goes at a Charge Fox station. Notice I'm not touching the steering wheel. Keep hands on steering wheel, it says. It's actually a really comfy car. I'm sitting a little bit higher than I'd like. Now it's getting a little bit more insistent. I'd love to, but I just don't feel like it right now. So what are you going to do about it? It's still keeping me in my lane. Still waiting. Oh, lane follow assist cancelled. And look, the car's doing its level best to keep me safe. That's not as good a job. Okay, I'm back on the job. It kept the cruise control running. Now a Tesla wouldn't do that. A Tesla would have switched off all the functions, pulled over and parked, and then refused to give me back uh, those same functions again. This car does its best to keep driving. Interesting. I asked Mark if he wanted to come along, cruise along in an EV, and strangely, he didn't want to do that. I think he'd rather stab himself in the eyeball. Call Mark Williamson. Calling traffic. Mark Williamson. Hi, Stu. G'day, mate. How are you? Uh, not too bad. How's your, how's your road trip going? It's fantastic. I'm just coming into Goulburn now. Honestly, this car makes it so easy. Don't you wish you were sitting beside me here doing a doing an eight or nine hour road trip in an EV? Not, not really, no. It will be interesting, mate. It will, um, particularly the bit later on when I'm going over the range up to Lithgow. It's, it's bang on the predicted, um, in fact it's doing better than I expected, 15.5 kilowatt hours per 100k. But admittedly yeah. I'm cruising, but on the other hand I'm on the freeway, we're doing 110, so we're pushing a lot of air out of the way, so I reckon that's really good. Hey, what's the car like? It's really nice. I mean, like all SUVs, I'm sitting a little higher than I'd like. Yeah. yeah I'll just put there we go. Oh, it just cancelled lane follow assist. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, push the limits too much, I get sent to the naughty yeah. corner. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have a, good. See you, mate. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. First task completed. We found a charging station. So here's the story so far. 206 k is done, charging at 52 kilowatts. To use it, I did have to, to use the Charge Fox app. Really piece of cake. I just plugged in, told the app here that I was at this particular port, and it just started charging, just like that. I believe this car's maximum charge capacity is only around 70 to 75 kilowatts which is nothing compared to um, Teslas and other vehicles, but then you've got to find a charger capable of delivering that to you. Maybe this one can, but for this vehicle anyway, I'll take it, 50 kilowatts. We don't actually need to charge. We could carry on to the next destination without stopping and probably get back again. But we'll put in a little bit because I'm hungry. Well, that went spectacularly well. I nicked over to Macca's, that was the downside. And we have 85% charge. Uh, stop charging. Here we go. Ooh, 15 bucks. Ooh, it's quite, it's quite expensive, isn't it? The journey continues. And next destination, gunning. Woo, it's not actually hard once you've done it once. Right, coming up to the Canberra turn-off. Canberra, Australia's capital. We're not going there today. We're going west, out to Gunning. You know, I've been driving almost 50 years, and you do tend to see certain behaviour on the road all the time. I'd like to share certain types with you, and I hope these get adopted into the popular vernacular. The first one is the FOMO sapien. A FOMO sapien is someone who just doesn't want to miss out on some opportunity, so they will accelerate uh, in front of you, and if there's a truck in front, they go, no, no, I have to get there first, and they'll pull out alongside the truck, and typically then just sit there. 
So there could be just you three cars on the whole freeway, but you'll have one guy sitting right beside another if this fear of being overtaken. When you eventually get by, of course, they disappear in your mirror very quickly. Unlike the stick insect, who's the kind who wants to always be with you. He'll sit on you, he'll follow you, you change your speed, they'll be there. He'll pull alongside you, you'll just sit there, he'll hover. Sometimes also known as a magnetic hoverer. The stick insect just likes to be in company. He's a lonely person. He's not afraid of being overtaken, he just wants company. And of course, you've got the obligatory dual cab cowboys who are in their Hilux, or they're more often their Ford Ranger. <coughs> they're coming through. So if you're in the right lane and they're coming up, even if you're passing vehicles, they will sit this far off your bumper bar because you don't belong there. Get out of their way. They're more important than you. So the best thing is just let them go. This has been incredibly relaxing so far. As a, as a cruising car, the seat's good. There's no adjustment on the lumbar support or bolsters, but they're fine as they are. It's kind of got this leatherette material. Nice. I like this soft here so that you can sit your elbow on it. Really, really cruisy car. 60,000 bucks though, on the road. This is the Highlander, and it comes with more torque, bigger battery, 150 kilowatts, 400 Newton meters. I haven't shown you sport mode yet. There's sport mode, there's eco mode, there's normal mode. We'll discover them later on when it's more appropriate to do so. It doesn't have a smart e-diff, does spin the front wheels. Steering has a nice feel. Vision, everything great, ergonomics fantastic, everything you could want, drive modes. I like the Econon, it's got a driver only mode. If you're the only one in the car, you can turn it on and it's just servicing you, not everybody else. I'd never seen that before. Very good idea. All right, my little work job's completed here in Gunning. Lovely little town. Our range is 381K. We're only going 50K back to Goulburn, so that'll be a piece of cake. The digital radio reception out here, not great. So we need a podcast, that's all good to go. Android Auto's ready, Plug Share's ready, Google Maps is ready, Waze is ready, I'm ready, cameras are rolling, D for drive, engine started. How easy is that? Look at that, away we go. Now, we haven't done any performance testing on this car. It's not a performance car, but you don't have to worry about get up and go, even in normal mode. If you didn't hear that, it just, spun the front wheels at the top end of that. I was going to say at the top end of first gear, but it's only got one gear, so uh, it goes fine. Navigate to Goulburn Charge Fox. Charge Fox charging station is 33 minutes from your location by car in light traffic. Okay. You know, as a country, we need to wake up a little bit. The world's moved on. So many manufacturers are saying within a couple of years, they're not going to produce any petrol engines. And the next thing you say is the grid won't cope. Well, they're going to be here, guys, so we need to do something. Over 70% of charging for electric vehicles is already done using renewable energy. Source, the driven. And today I'll be doing my share of fossil fueled charging. But you have to remember, a petrol engine is not a very efficient thing. It generates an awful lot of heat and not a lot of motive power. An electric motor is a far more efficient thing. So even if you're fueling this car from the dirtiest possible energy source, it's still a much more efficient way to get around. Because next you're gonna say, what about the cost of manufacture? Yes, these cars are more energy intensive to manufacture, and it takes a while before you redeem that with the savings you get. However, the world's changing, guys. We need to actually get off our bums and actually do something. For 10 years, the last government did very little, except fight against it, but hey, we're now the dumping ground for the vehicles the rest of the world don't want. And a lot of big manufacturers that do make nice EVs, like Volkswagen, are not bringing them here because the government's been so hostile to the idea. We're getting the infrastructure finally, and today's the test, isn't it? Let's see if the infrastructure's any good. Bit of a rant, I know, I'm sorry about that. Steering feels nice. Brakes are a little bit grabby, but it sure goes well. It absolutely launches. 120, 130. No, 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 slow right down. 110 to the limit here, buddy. It gets up and boogies at any speed. Don't do that again, car. And before you know it, here we are back in Goulburn again. That was such an easy drive. Your destination is on the right. There's a Kona Electric Charging right next to us, our sister car. Yay. So, what's our story? A current range is 311 Ks. In theory, we don't need to stop. We could go all the way to Lithgow without stopping. 
but you know what? We're going to we're going to put a decent charge in this, and then we'll head off again. This is a snack so far. Charge session, charging. Well, it's lunchtime. This is the Highlander, and the advantages of this one over the Elite, it's got the 64 kilowatt hour battery, of which 60 is usable. And the fact that you can charge it 100% is a real factor. The range of this car, 484 Ks, as opposed to 305 from the other one. It's a no brainer, isn't it? You wouldn't go for the, the short range car. Uh, also, you get an extra 50 kilowatts. This is 150 kilowatts, not 100. Yeah, good car, but $60,000. Half the price of the BMW iX3 we reviewed last week, but still quite a lot more than the entry level cars. But I tell you, the quality of these cars is great. So it's a case of all three bays are taken now. How's this guy going? Let's have a look. He's nearly finished his charge. He's at 91% and only charging at uh, 22 kilowatts. It seems like I've only just got here and we're almost back to 80% again. No, I'm just going to chill and eat my sandwich. What are we at? 89%. That'll do. Heaps. Head south towards Sydney Road. Yep, we'll do that in a second. Stop charging. Man, how easy is this? Goodbye, Tesla. Enjoy your drive, buddy. 210 k's or something, three hours of driving. Take the next left onto Sydney Road. Thank you, Gertrude. This is so exciting, isn't it? Are you excited? Continue on Sydney Road for one and a half kilometres. Okay. And the sun's still out. I was expecting pouring rain by now. Definitely sports mode. It's, it's better. Steering sharpens up. Throttle response seems a little brighter. And, uh, and it certainly handles that change of direction better. Fairly responsive. And you can feel it's not a sports car. It's a little bit slow on the turn and back again. And there's a bit of this... But in eco mode, or normal mode, and it's way lazier. In fact, it just, uh, that disabled this cruise control that was so abrupt. Sport mode, definitely, it's the closest thing we'll get to a sports car. It's, it's good, but it's, it's SUV. That ride that was so perfect on the freeway is, uh, it's still really comfortable, but we're starting to see its limitations as a, as a performance car. I know, it's not a performance car but you want your family SUV to perform. I'm still really, really impressed. And I'll turn the headlights on, even though it uses a bit more battery, we don't care. But twisty, windy, up and down. And the first thing I'm finding, I can use these paddle shifts, which varies the amount of regen in a useful fashion. If we're cruising along the section, we go up, 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 and the car just tends to flow along a bit better. So up a hill, we take off the regen, and once you come over the top, come into a corner, we'll put on a bit of regen as we lift off. So instead of using the brake there, use a bit of regen. Here's a tighter corner. Lift off, it slows down a bit, back on the gas. Over the top, go up a gear, metaphorically. Down once on the paddle, gives us a bit of regen as we lift off, and then back on the gas again as we come out. Works really well. You can feel the weight of the car. This isn't a particularly heavy EV but you can actually feel it. It doesn't pitch in like a Tesla Model 3 Performance or a Taycan, as you wouldn't expect it to. But you can feel it takes a bit of stopping down here. Look it in. Yeah. Grip levels are good. Michelin Primacies. I think it'd do better with Pilot Sport 4s. Very steep climb. Oh dear. That'll test the batteries. 15k hairpin and masses of torque. And whoop. Oh. Rattling a bit of understeer. Yeah, it's working for traction there. It doesn't have a smart electronic diff in it, so tight corners like that, the scrabbling for traction a little bit. Just flies up this hill. Yeah, hills are absolutely no problem in this car. Give me a place for you. Thank you. Isn't that nice when you meet a nice trucky like that? Moves right over, makes it easy for you. Compared to cars, I suppose you could, the new Kia e Nero is arguably, well, unarguably, a more stylish looking car. Interestingly, it's the same motor, the same power, 150 kilowatts, 
but it has considerably less torque, only 255 newton meters versus the 400 in this. They've backed it off. It is, however, more expensive than this. So that's the price you pay for fashion. Korean cars, Kia and Hyundai, like this one, you know they're well built. You know they've got good service plans. So what's it like to overtake in this car? Piece of cake. Isn't it funny how people do 90, 90 k's an hour in a 100 zone, then as soon as you want to come by they're doing 120, FOMO sapien. Okay, we've been sucking through the electrons a bit faster there, 19.3 since the last recharge, well up from the 15 we were getting before, so do I need to be careful? No, what the hell? What's the worst thing that can happen? I end up on the back of a flatbed, knock on someone's door asking if they've got an extension lead? Not going to happen. Range anxiety? Puh. Ben Fordham, I don't know what you're talking about. I reckon we could still make it home without even stopping. And there's a big crow on the road. No, it's not, it's an echidna. It's an echidna. Just keep our eyes open. You can see why autopilot's not a great idea. You could be sailing along here, just blissfully chatting to your passenger and go, boom, and knock out that fine Australian animal. And you wouldn't want to do that. We will stop at Lithgow and charge there. And the main reason is, the charges are right outside the Lithgow Workman's Club. I'm going to get a bit of food. Well, that was a fun drive over the range. From here, down to Lithgow, look, 221k range. It's only... Uh, we could easily get home. But we'll try and top it up just for the sake of doing the exercise. I want to see if the charge is working. See, how, that's the whole point of it, to see how practical this whole thing is. And then we'll cruise home. So, hello Mark. How are you doing, mate? Good, not Mark Williamson, Mark Edwards, another EV owner. I'm honking up the hills towards uh, Lithgow here, and this thing just does not feel the hills at all. It's just. Can you hear that motor working? Not a sound. <laughs> all I could, you, you could be sitting in a lounge room, I had no idea where you are. Hand of God, 400 newton meters pushing you uphill. Yeah, exactly, yeah, it's nice. It's nicely damped on the highway and on the, on the twisties. Um, it's not quite sporty enough for me, but it's still really, really good, so very impressed. When, we, when people are talking about EV in infrastructure, yes, the key, the key is that they need to put more than one or two charges yep. at each location. Yep. Uh, they, they, need, they need to put three or four, yep. um, to, and especially when we start to get more cars on the road. Yep. Because all, all you need is one of those to be broken, and, and it could ruin your day. Yep. There were two only, and one was broken yesterday, or not working yesterday. No. So. My whole, my whole journey could go pear-shaped in about half an hour. And I'm coming into the Workies car park, and I see two yeah, charges, and two charges, and they're both free. You know what's nice about this car? The charge port is right in the center of the, the bonnet, so you can just drive straight in. And it looks like one of them's lit up and the other not. We shall see. You yeah, nice chatting with you. See ya. You too, mate. Okay, bye-bye. I did nothing more than just plug in and push the start button. Uh, so there's no charge to me for this one at all. We've got 43% battery, much more than I expected. More than enough. We've still got 200k range, so we could easily get home from here. It says in 35 minutes, in half an hour, it'll be back at 80%. I don't really care how much we put in. I'll just have a little toilet stop, and have a sausage roll, then we can get going again. But yes, there are two chargers here, but it looks like only one is operational. We're at the charger. I'm going to check in charging now in case they come here and they find that one's not working which it may or may not be they need this one well what can i say 78 percent because i was just having too much fun in the pub stop disconnect the adventure continues so 38 minutes we were there a lot longer than i thought but i was just having if you get the chance go to the lithgow workies club and have a toasted cheese and avocado Sandwich for five or six bucks. Fantastic. Our range is now 350 k's. We've got about 120 to go. Easy as pie, we're away. But Mark's right, you know. The infrastructure does need to improve. Think of it as like toilet cubicles when you go to the theatre at interval and there's one or two cubicles, you've got a problem. If there are four, you know, not so much a problem. Somebody's going to come out of one of those cubicles pretty soon and you'll be okay before the bell goes and you go back in the theatre. Could you hear the front wheel spinning then? Hook it in. I'm losing my cupcake. This car has no problem getting up the Lithgow Hill. In absolute silence. Okay, it's not a Porsche 911, but it's damn fast up here. 
35 kilowatt hours per 100 K average. Not good. I'm sure that'll smooth out as we head down the hill because once we're over the range, it's a downhill run all the way to Sydney. It's not as if you have to sit and park and wait forever. Even with this relatively slow charging car, it was not a problem at all. So there you are. If you're thinking about an EV, I'd suggest it's a totally viable option. If you're thinking about a Kona electric EV, it's a quality product and I'd encourage you to seriously consider it. By the way, I'm an adaptive cruise here. I've got the limit set to 80, which is the speed limit. And you can set the distance you want to follow at, as you'd expect. It works really well. So I'm not doing anything with the throttle. I'm just sort of gently following. It's maintaining a nice gap. And we know we've got so much grunt that when the opportunity comes, we're going to shoot past in a flash. But look, now we're doing 16 k's an hour in an 80 zone because we're behind a coal truck on a single lane road. Hands off. And away we go. Okay. An entirely comfortable seat after being in here since dawn this morning. It just does everything with so little fuss. Change direction here. Yeah, not bad. Just letting it roll down the hill as we come down. We're adding mileage to the car because it's putting the regen back in the batteries. And we're actually getting more distance out of the thing. Well, that's it. That's just about the end of our 650 kilometer drive. A bit less than I thought. It's still pretty good. And here we are, back at Cafe Patina, where we started. Average 14.5 kilowatt hours per 100k, better than the manual says for this car, and eight and a half hours driving. Okay, it's time to talk about charging and cost. I had three stops for food and some volts, but you can see the battery state of charge barely got under 50% all day. Range anxiety for first time EV drivers is real, but I was way more cautious than I needed to be. Being on the road for so long, it was no problem at all to have a couple of short stretch and food breaks. But I did not need to stop three times, or even twice. And remember, I didn't hold back, I was driving it like I would a petrol car. Aircon, stereo, headlights, and plenty of right foot action. Let's just say I skipped the second Goulburn stop. You can see, no problem at all. It still would not have gone under 25% charge. And for argument's sake, if I'd only stopped once for that breakfast at Macca's, and skipped both the second stop at Goulburn, and let's say the Lithgow charger was either vandalised or occupied, and I couldn't be bothered diverting to go somewhere else, I still would have made it home. Just. So my message to Ben Fordham, mate, you're a dill, and you're not helping matters. I know you're just a stirrer chasing headlines, but no, the public infrastructure does need to improve, and that is finally happening. Fast, but not fast enough. Yes, it's true, we are 10 years behind Europe and the USA. As a nation, it's time to wake up, and you're not helping. So what did it cost me? The first Goulburn stop cost 15 bucks, the second stop 11 bucks, and the NRMA charger at Lithgow was free and unlimited. So to get back to 100% at home at off peak rate, I needed another 38 kilowatt, which was about another six bucks. The most expensive way to charge is by using public ultra fast chargers, which I did. More than twice the price of charging at home at domestic rates and about four times more expensive than the overnight off peak rate. Total cost to me, 32 bucks. The same trip in my 2 litre Skoda would have used 52 litres of premium fuel, which today would have cost 114 bucks. And it's also worth making the point that if I'd driven 660 kilometres of suburban motoring and just charged at home overnight, like most EV owners do, energy cost would have been about $15 all up. Some EV owners I know are lucky enough to have their own solar and battery solution, so filling the car costs them nothing at all. For regular people like me, using energy from the grid, driving this Kona EV would be between three and seven times cheaper than petrol, depending how and where I charge. Thanks for watching Incarnation. Something with petrol in it next week. See you soon, thanks for watching. Oh hey, you made it right through to the end of the video. Congratulations, thank you for watching. If you like what you see, Please share it with your motoring friends 
and above all click the little subscribe thing down here so you can see the latest videos when we bring them out hopefully each week. I look forward to seeing you soon.